United States Marine Corps, number 250-1143. pitch black all around. There was a basketball court out there that had about 200 yellow footprints all lined up. And it was totally dark outside except for a big overhead light just lighting the basketball court only. Everything else, you couldn't see what else was around there. And as soon as the bus stopped, door pops open and DI's out there, get off the truck, Get out of the bus and find a pair of yellow footprints. That was a, I had to think about that for a minute. And I saw, okay, I know what to do. <laughs> I was honor man of the platoon. I came out top man. There was guys that could run faster than me. Guys that could, a couple guys that could maybe outthink me, but they couldn't outshoot me. And there was one guy that outshot me, but I, Definitely run sinker circles around him. So after boot camp, it had to be about three months. Some guys got Germany, some guys got Spain, some guys, everybody else got Vietnam. So when you when you get the news, you you, you half expect it. I mean, that's that's where you're going to be going. Especially when I was going to the Marine Corps, I knew I wasn't going to go to Germany or Spain. I, but I had already figured that there's probably a, a, a pretty good chance I'm not coming back. Uh, just because of, you just don't know what to expect. And, you, and the Marine Corps prepares you for worst case scenarios. So it just says, well, if I come back, I'll be lucky. I landed in Da Nang, and from there, we transferred to a uh, Hill 34. It rained every day. First, yeah, I'd never seen so much rain. And that's, I guess they call that the monsoon season there. That went on for a good two months. And uh, then, it, then it let up. Their, their their idea of winter is 70 degrees. You know, that's cold. That's cold. So, other than that, it's hot. Not, not as hot as they claim. It wasn't 125 like some guys said, but it was damn hot because it was humid. So, most of the time it was around in the high 90s and 100, but, but uh, the humidity made it real unbearable. You just, you're dripping wet and clammy, sticky all the time, 24 hours a day. You get used to it. It's all about luck. It's just, just you know, things, things zing over your head and things hit near you and in there, but I don't know. A uh, mortar, mortar round landed about 15, 20 feet from me one time. That was pretty close. You know, the, the, the deal that came up was the protesting. That we, we got we we got all all that news back over there. That all the protesting was going on, and Jane Fonda and all her bullshit, and and the Berkeley you know anti-war protests, all that. And uh, I remember what a friend of mine from uh, New Mexico, Bob Jerome, he uh, they asked him. You know, if, when he got out, is he going to be a hippie? And, and he goes, yeah, I probably will. And how about, a, are you going to be a protester? Well, yeah, that's that's what we're over here for. And the, and the gunnery sergeant goes, what? What are you talking about? He says, that's why we're over here. Because we're over here fighting so we can have a country so we can protest if we don't like something. You know, we're, we're in the military, and it's your job in the military to fight battles. It's not your job to decide what battle to fight. That's the 
politicians did a job. So we were over there doing our job, and we all understood that, you know, and just wanted to put in our time and get it over with. I never thought that we would cave in and pull all our troops out and give it, give it all, all that we fought for, give it all back. Never thought that. But uh, so as far as being over there, it's a, it's a really, other than the humidity, it's a beautiful country. Man, it's just lush and green and all kinds of stuff. And uh, we always envisioned ourselves, you know, going back. 20-year reunion, 30-year reunion. We're gonna, let's come back to this hill up here. Let's have, let's bring us a 12-pack up here and break it open. Just remember the old days. You know? you know, for your close friends, they appreciate what you did. For everybody else, it didn't matter. We knew that going. We knew that over there. We knew that we were over there. That have three fourths of the people didn't even understand what we were doing over there, and why we were over there. And we knew when we went back, we weren't going we to appreciate what we did. Because I always felt that every, I always felt that every every man owes something to this country. You have to buy a you have to buy a ticket to get into the show, you know. And uh, I I didn't we I knew that, but see, I grew up with the draft already enacted. We everybody knew that the draft was there, and that was just a part of life. But that was only one time. Some of these poor guys are in for year after year. I, I think they can't, when they come home, they can't turn it off. They, can, they just can't turn it off anymore. I could. <laughs>